Thank you, Pastor Jordan. And thank you for this great privilege to share about Cameroon. Before sharing about Cameroon, I wish to acknowledge that this church has saved to us as home, away from home. We have actually felt so loved, so encouraged, and so cared for. What a nice time to talk about Cameroon. Jordan just narrated a little bit of the story this week. One of the things that have been happening in Cameroon is this war situations. They won't like anybody that is entering the country that has military background. Because what they are feeling is that there are people presently in this country who has Cameroon origin that are supporting the boys that are fighting the military. So anybody that is getting on with military uh, background could be arrested. And they have arrested so many. Some are Cameroonians, some are Americans. They can arrest you, keep you there for two weeks after they release you to go back, to go back home. So again, we, we thought that God actually was working behind the scenes. Praise God that some of us were praying and uh, God could give us those directions. Now, we're not able to go to Cameroon, but like Pastor said, we will bring Cameroon, part of Cameroon here. Now, the objective of this presentation will be to share a little bit of what has been happening in, in Cameroon ministry, especially the one that I know, especially the one that I led. So many things have been happening there, but I will just capture a bit of what I know and a bit of what I led there for, for this length of time. And also, another objective would be that you could pray for this, for this venture. Maybe we are saying we are going to Cameroon. You never had an idea of whatsoever they are going to do in Cameroon and why should they go to Cameroon. We are trusting God that God will burden our hearts to this. I'll be talking this morning on behalf of the Cameroon partners. On behalf of the Cameroon partners. Uh, the Cameroon ministry. The verse is the harvest is plentiful. Luke 10, 2. When you see the harvest, you take the risk. When you see the harvest, you take the risk. One of the things I know is, if it is just because of war, Jordan, Tim, and Danny and others will not, if it's just because of Cameroon, they will not be going there. Because it's, it's kind of risky on one side. Though where we were going was very safe. But it's kind of risky on one side. But we are going to Cameroon for the harvest. Because that is what we believe Luke 2 is telling us to do. Now the next slide we are going to be seeing is, Cameroon is very cultural. It's cultural. You could see this is, this is a church service. Uh, where people come dressed. They, when we say cultural, they are dancing. They sing. It's actually a very joyous place. This is a church I pastor. And we used to have what we call... Cultural Sunday, where you, you are expected to dress in culture, we sing cultural songs, we eat cultural food. This is just trying to make people drink the gospel in African cups. Let, let's, let's move to the next, the, next, the next slide. Hope Baptist Church is actually the church I pastor. So what I'm, what I'm talking, I'm talking on behalf of Hope Baptist, presenting the needs of ministry to First Missionary Church. Hope Baptist Church was... Started 1987, uh, 1997, sorry. And then you go to move slide, the next, this was the church before, before I came. I took the church when it was like this. You can see that structure. Uh, the structure had a lot of, it had dilapidated, lots of things were happening there. The pastor before me did a great work. But it reached a stage in the church that the church plateaued started declining and was actually heading towards death. So that, that is, that when I see the image, this image, it reminds me of my past. It reminds me the past story of the church. Next slide, sorry, thank you. This is the presentation. The one behind there, that's a children's church. 
in between these two churches, that is where we lived. That's where Mildred, I, and the children, we lived in between, in between there. It was kind of a really crowded place, but that's, that's where we, we stayed. Thanks. Thank you, brother. That's a children's church at that time. Very dusty, very muddy. We didn't even know how the children were coping there, but they were all in there. Uh, there was a kitchen too, very close to that, and sometimes the people can do pepe, and it enters there, and then children will be coughing all through in the service. Uh, next. Uh, now, when the church started declining, one of the things that was happening that show was splits. Africa is a blessed with lots of diversity. But the challenge of diversity of culture is that it brings lots of splits, divisions in the church due to tribalism and all these things. The church fell into serious splits. That's why it caused the church to be declining. And the church felt that the pastor at that time should not be the pastor. So the church needed a new pastor or a renewed pastor. Uh, so that is how they sorted out and extended their call to me. In fact, two of us standing there, that is the pastor before me. So even though we came, we tried to build all relationships. He loved the church really in bad state. He was, he was not feeling fine the way the church treated him. But when I came, I had to call him, and we had to reconcile before the church and pray together for ministry to move on smoothly. The next slide. The new ministry trajectory. What we tried to do at that point was recarving the church into a new trajectory. What trajectory can we take from, from our background, from what has happened, from our gifts, from our whatsoever that God endowed the church with? And we came out with a purpose statement that was, we are a family of believers in the Lord determined to experience, express, and expect the kingdom of God. The next, next slide. Now, the, as we were living that purpose statement, the first the thing is that we need to be devoted to prayers and devoted to the word. One of the things that God sent me clearly, Mildred and I went to the service when we were being re received, and we heard the challenges of the church, and we felt so small to lead that kind of a church. We felt so weak and so ill-equipped to lead that kind of a church. When we came back and we were talking, and uh, we said, God is sending us here to be men of prayer and men of the word. And we resolved that we will never say anything in that church that doesn't come from God's word. Man of the spirit and man of the word. That's how God led us through. So, Next slide, you are going to see how the church was moved into a prayer, a house of prayer. That was an all-night prayer. Sometimes we come to church and we spend all night. We come at 10 p.m. and we leave at 5 a.m. in the morning. We were just in church. It was, it was a great prayer time. Before we came there, the church never loved. Some people never wanted even the prayers. But as we started, the move was going on. Next slide, Gloria. Thank you so much. Also, like I said, devoted to God's word, that was small group discipleship. And sometimes Sunday service runs into small groups. The next, uh, next thing now, what was the impact with all this happening? The impact was that there was a multiplication of disciple makers. There was a multiplication of small groups, multiplication of disciple movement, leaders, and churches. Now, this... From that old structure that you saw and saw it dilapidated, this is how we progressively went to this new structure. So this is, this, this is not a new structure. This is what they're currently in now. Right, you can see me right at the pulpit right away there, a little bit thereof. So that is, that is how the church progressed infrastructurally. Many were being baptized because I said multiplication of disciples. This is what we call the boys' brigade. They, 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 they were also growing up and getting on into full ministry. Yes. Leadership building, too, was part of, part of the ministry, trying to see how we will multiply leaders. Now, we were multiplying churches as, as well. Now, this was one of our church plants that I, we were planting. It's called Countenance Baptist Church, and we were officially launching it, and as a pastor, a church planter that I, I trained, and he is leading the church presently. Community impact. 
So it wasn't just about churches growing. One thing in Africa is that politicians like doing community impact. And when they do that, they do that to have votes. And they do that to have the glory. But when the church gets into community impact, God takes the glory. So we were also actively involved in community impact because Africa has a dependency mindset. They want to depend. So if the church imposes itself to the community, the church will depend. I mean, the community will depend on the church. So one of the things that the community impact was doing there is that they were causing the people in that community to know that we can depend on the church. And so that's what was happening. Now we were constructing bridges. Look at bridges. That's a bridge. Two communities were separated. Nobody was able to cross. This was also helping people to come to the church. So we constructed this, this bridge locally. Christians went, believers, and constructed the bridge. You can see them there doing the work. Now there was something also happening. The whole community lacked water. They didn't have water to drink. They would travel miles and go and fetch dirty water. So one day we had, as we were in the construction, we had money to, to cement our floor, to make the church floor. So as I was praying at night, the Lord told me that this community needs water. Don't you think you can help in that? So we stopped the flooring. I called the leaders and we talked about it, we prayed about it, and we said, this community does not have water. What does it mean if we go and we're making a cement floor with people who also come to church and they don't have water to drink? So what we did was that we did a borehole or a well. That is it. You see how people line up. They come very early in the morning, they line up those buckets, and they're right in the church compound at Hope Baptist. That's in Barmenda, where the war is. So they come and they fetch water, and they go back to their various places. Let me tell you, this has been so significant, very significant. We have gone to evangelize. Many of them have testified about this water. Some of their relatives living in the United States called somebody living in Barmenda and said, if there is a church in your community, that gave you water, go to that church. And so I had a lot of people that just because of this water, lots of things happened. This is a great breakthrough for ministry. It's a big breakthrough for ministry. I, I can testify, I can see what is happening. Even when there is persecution, because sometimes you have people around, like these boys who are fighting, they were entering churches, killing people, and then, they could not come to Hope Baptist because they knew that Hope Baptist was supplying water to the community. So that you, you cannot be biting the hand that, that fits you. Right. So that, that, is, that is what happened. Good news is also the word, but this is also good news when you are feeding the community. They actually know that that is exactly that. Next, next slide. Now, there was also widows and orphans ministry. So during Christmas... We will gather all the widows, try to feed them, try to see what we can do. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough, especially now. Orphans have just multiplied. But we did what we could do. Those are the bags they were carrying home, and it, it gave a smile to them at least once, once, once a year. That's still part of the distribution going on. Now... That was Hope Baptist in Barmenda. As they were growing, our eyes opened to an area called Kongsamba. And Kongsamba was a French place. One of the things in the Cameroon terrain is that most French places are unrich. One of the places in Kongsamba. And what picked our attention in Kongsamba is because the dominant economic power is called the Bamileke people in Cameroon, and they are not rich out. The, the, the gospel have not touched them. Not at all. They go to church, but not really. They are the great migrant people. Anywhere in Cameroon they are found. They are transcend in, in nature. Kongsamba was important for us because of that. Now, that is a field pastor on Kongsamba. He's called Pastor Abraham. He, he is a very passionate in ministry. He needed a partnership that can help him multiply disciples and multiply churches in that area. So Hope Baptist Church partnered 
with him one year before I left. Now, I've been going down to Kongsamba doing some trainings. Those are some people that they gather in Kongsamba there, and then we do some trainings. Their disciples are multiplying also. We're trying to carry that same approach from Hope Baptist Church right in there. Now, the first missionary that we released to Kongsamba was this guy to go and plant a French church. He is called Pastor Clovis. He had planted a French church uh, one year ago. The church is about 25 people. He's actually French-speaking. He grew up in Hope Baptist Church. I discipled him, mentored him, and then released him. And he is presently. That's one of the churches I thought Danny would be preaching. That's, that, that was the church that Danny was to preach there. And Clovis was waiting for him. Now, this is when we go down to Kongsamba. We move in teams. We engage the roads. We, 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 we share the gospel. We also pictured this when we were planning with Pastor Jordan and the rest. Building teams with the people who are on seat and getting out together and sharing. It takes building a multiplication movement to do this. Multiplication of disciples. It takes a going. That is a car. That was my car we used to move out to, to go for, 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 for that, those ventures. But now we'll not use a car, we'll use a plane. That, it also takes stopping on the way and buying some fruits. Uh, so in Cameroon, you see those, those things happening along the way. Yeah, this is the dedication program. We went to Kongsamba, we dedicated the whole land for the gospel. There are lots of strongholds there too. There are lots of spiritual attacks, there are a lot of blockages there. You actually sense them when you begin to go there. So when they're praying in the land, doing prayer walks, doing biblical declaration, and let me let you know, there was a word that Jordan echoed from this pulpit, and it hit me right on my chest. He said, the Lord is doing a new thing in First Missionary Church. He said it. I noted that down very strongly because it was so strong to me. And one of the new things that I feel that the Lord is doing is that he is wanting us to explore new mission frontiers. And Kongsamba is just, is just one of those frontiers. We could see recruiting and training. That's all about the next, next slide. Building disciples. Engaging individuals. Also giving cup of water to people. Food feeding them. I see that here very seriously. You've been feeding us. That's the same thing. Now, Pastor, this is the team that has been on ground waiting for us. Pastor Wilson is there. Pastor Abraham is, is there. And the leaders of the church wishing to partner with First Missionary Church for this exploit. The challenge this morning is that we should partner with Hope Baptist and Kong Samba Field. One of the things, uh, just go to previous slide, partner to pray for the Lord to send more laborers in Kong Samba. As the work started, Doors were opening. These are places that are lining up for missions already right there. These are four straight places that are lining up. They are lining up for churches to be planted. They are lining up for, for, for mission ventures. They are ready. Ready. Next. Be a frontline mission volunteer. Our, our going to Kongsamba was in line with the B, frontliners. Let's go to the front line, see what is happening there. Because we were not able to go to the front line, we have struggled to capture this a little bit for us to see. B, partner to plant churches in Kongsamba on rich city. D, let's dig wells. I can assure you that the main church in Kongsamba Field has been struggling to dig a well, but they don't have resources. Because all the people around there have been struggling to have water. And when they came to Hope Baptist Church and saw what was happening, they felt that this could be 
a good ministry tool to use in that area. E, you can also parent often affected by the harsh war conditions. After all this, what will happen? After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Can we just thank Pastor Joel? You can stay here for a minute. Joel, you can stay here in one minute, one minute. Um, so uh, Cameroon is a country that the Lord has really brought to this church as a nation that he wants us to have an impact to. Many of you know the history of First Missionary Church. We have been in so many different nations doing missions. Global missions is part of our DNA. And I felt one of the things the Lord was saying as, as I stepped into here is that he wanted to expand this to not only go to some of the existing countries we've been in and keep missions going, to also venture into new countries. And so uh, when Joel and his family started coming, it was amazing, and I started hearing the stories about how God was moving in Cameroon and how parallel it is to what God is doing here. I knew that this was an amazing partnership. And so as the church, what we can be doing is we need to be praying. There are so many opportunities to partner. We are definitely going to be sending people to Cameroon. We are, there's definitely going to be lots of things here in the future with Cameroon, with partnering with Joel. And honestly, we've been just so blessed to have Joel and his family here, haven't we? They've, they've, and yeah. I mean, truly, this is a very humble man who, uh, he hasn't even scratched the surface about the movement of God that he helped lead in Cameroon and the people that have been saved and baptized. And for, um, you know, I, I, I learn a lot from this guy, but he comes every Sunday, him and his family, and they serve in any possible way just being here. And uh, so it's very humbling for me to even have you here. So let's pray for Joel's family. Let's pray for Cameroon. Let's ask the Lord to begin revealing what he wants us to do. So Father, we thank you for Joel. We thank you for his family. And we thank you for Cameroon. We thank you that you, you love Cameroon, that it is on your heart. And um, you look to us right now and you're saying, I want to send my church first missionary to Cameroon. And I want to partner and I want to bring the kingdom of God both in Cameroon and here from Cameroon. We know there's partnerships coming, Lord. And so, Father, begin to reveal this to us. Open our eyes. Um, let our hearts be burdened for Cameroon. And stir something in us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you again, Joel. Blessings to you. Okay, awesome.